Hello, my faithful friends and followers. You are in for a treat for season three opener. It's going to be a two-parter. I'm here now with Errol Thompson. We are going to be talking about marriage and preparation for marriage. So part one, we're going to be dealing with some interpersonal um, development. And as you can see, the title is Ain't Gonna Be No, I Wasn't Ready. Yes. I know Errol from, <laughs> from simply connecting via Zoom with our life coaching meetings and means yeah. I really don't know him, but he was a spark that I noticed the minute I met him. And so I'm so grateful that <laughs> season three is happening and he is here. If you could tell us a little bit more about your background before we get started, that would be helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my name is Errol Thompson. I am the uh, I'm a blogger uh, and life purpose coach. Um, I write for the Kingdom Strong blog, um, and I recently became a life purpose coach through uh, Awaken uh, Life Coach Ministries uh, through Zoe Christian Fellowship in Whittier, California, Southern Cali. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. um, Represent. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm married. Uh, for 11 years now, uh, going on 12 in August. Um, I have two children, uh, Zoe, who is nine, Matthew, who is eight. Um, grew up in, uh, but well, my parents were pastors, uh, long line of pastors, grew up in the church. I was a youth pastor for Lord knows how long, <laughs> um, working with youth and young adults. Um, a lot of the work that I did with youth and young adults um, allowed me to do a lot of uh, mission work. Um, I've traveled to uh, London to meet with, uh, you know, leaders, um, uh, been to Nigeria and Africa, um, built houses in Mexico, uh, you know, did young adult trips to Canada, um, and then just all around the country, you know, just working with young people. So it's, it's really been good. Um, and uh, I really felt like becoming a life coach now at this point really just fit my personality. It just yes. really fit who I was. Um, and so uh, this is this allows me to um, talk about the things that I'm passionate about, uh, being a parent, uh, being a husband, being married, um, you know, helping people, uh, you know, and faith leaders, uh, coaching up, you know, people in the faith. Uh, so that's, that's, you know, just a little bit about me. And, and I, I think one of my um, passions is, um, you know, it's bring a lot of energy, you know, to environments and, and atmospheres. Um, and so um, I'm I, I consider myself not patting myself on the back or anything. A life of the party. Amen. I know. I know, I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> and I was just saying, like, being, it's important to bring energy into a room rather than suck the energy out of a room. Oh, yes. So, absolutely. Man, absolutely. that's so good. Did yeah. we even, uh, on that form, did I even ask you about the stupid, innocent story from childhood or anything? Um, we, could, we could cut No, right I... <laughs> I don't have an interesting story from childhood, but I do have an interesting story that recently just happened to me. Okay. Um, so I was, uh, so my kids have been distance learning and um, I was uh, going to drop off some of their work and across the street from the school was a gentleman that I've known for a really long time. He's a parent, um, you know, of one of the kids at the school. And when I drove up at the front of the school, he's in his gym, you know, in his garage, working out, doing core. You know, he's just, you know, he's a beautiful specimen of a man. <laughs> um, and he's, you know, he's working out. And so I got out of the car and I see him and we exchange hellos. And, you know, I, I haven't seen him since, you know, uh, um, you know, we've been quarantining. And he was just telling me how a lot of things of his life has changed. And he's working at home from now. And now he gets a workout. And he's just standing there just glistening with the work, <laughs> you know, that he was just, you know, doing. And, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, man, you know, just like, man, one day, you know, I'll, I'll get there. And, um, you know, we're finished, we're done. Uh, and so, hey, listen, I, I tell him, I gotta go back to this, I gotta go to school, gotta drop this stuff off. And so as we're leaving each other's presence, I'm walking across the street and my phone rings. And I'm walking across the street, looking down, I look both ways and I'm looking down at my phone and apparently I don't have really good spatial recognition because I walked so far looking at my phone that I tripped over the, over the curb. And I mean, all of my kids' papers went up in the air. Oh my, my phone God. flew in the air. And, here, and here's that neighbor guy lifting, you know, doing his core. And he's like, hey man, you, you all right? You, like, you okay? And I'm laying on the ground like, 
you know, it would be the guy who's working out. That's right. You know, That's a sitcom who, moment, right? You know, I mean, I mean, just, you know, here I am laying on the ground like, oh, this guy's looking at me. You know, he's, you know, probably thinking, man, if he would work out, he could probably make that curb. You know, um, <laughs> oh, but man. yeah, it, it, it just help. goes to show you. Yeah, no, it, it happened um, maybe two weeks ago. I love you know, it. Just goes to show you that you need to, you know, you need to pay attention to where you're going and what you're doing. Oh, trust um, me. I am the know. biggest klutz. I drop right. things, break things, spill things and lose things. I'm like, absolutely. How you like me now? Right. <laughs> yes. So uh, you mentioned you were a pastor's kid. Can I even call that um, a situationship? Because yes. tell yes. me if you not, did you not have, because you were a PK that you just were like, I don't want anything to do with this. At early on, I did not. Um, a lot of people would ask me uh, if I was going to go into the ministry, um, you know, when I was, you know, eight, 11. Um, and I told them, no, I was going to become a pediatrician. Mm. Um, I, I was going to work with children and youth uh, through the medical industry. And that's everything that I wanted to do, um, probably up until I was about 14. And then I wanted to be a teacher oh. because I felt like, I was like, you know what? I really like this teaching thing. I, you know, I, I could, I, you know, um, working with a lot of my, you know, classmates, sharing with them information that I would learn. I was like, oh, maybe I could be a teacher. But, but there was always this steady line of working with young people, mm. and being a pediatrician, working with, you know, being a mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and then the year, I think I was a junior, I think in high school, I wanted to be a chef. Like I wanted to go into culinary arts, but I wanted to work in a place where, oh, I want to make it, I, I was going to make a really fun restaurant to be at for families. But there was always this theme of, you know, family and children. Um, and, then, and then my parents, I told my parents my junior year because they were one of the, we were talking about, you know, where I wanted to go to college. And I told them, I was like, you know what? I, I know this is going to sound crazy. I know I said I want to be a doctor and a teacher, but I really think I want to cook food. And my dad's jaw dropped. It was like, <laughs> like, like, he was just like, I'm sorry, say that again. <laughs> and, and he was like, I, I didn't raise you to be a chef. Mm. And I was like, oh, really? I mean, because I thought you said I could be anything. Oh. And then we said, and then, and then we said, no. I was like, oh, okay. All right. I, no, oh. I understand. Oh. Um, that. Yeah, no, it was, it was heartbreaking. It, it was. Mm. And, you know, sometimes to this day when I'm cooking for my family and stuff, it's just like, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I make oh. the perfect scrambled eggs, Dad. <laughs> I made these perfect scrambled eggs for you, Dad. I made them for you. With love. With love and appreciation and oh, attention. Oh, no. Um, so you did not become a chef is what you're saying. No, I, I didn't become a chef. My freshman year in college, I became an engineer. Yeah. Well, and you never change your major and you now, that's I, I, and And so I went through college. Um, that's such a different, uh, yeah. like from medical teaching, cooking. Yeah, and but then... what was interesting about that whole thing is that even when I went into college, uh, the summer before I went into college, I preached my first sermon on Father's Day. And so even when I was in college doing engineering, mm. then I went into you know, the, the field of ministry where I was a youth counselor and then became a head youth counselor. Nice. And then I became a youth pastor wow. yet still doing engineering, you know, worked for the army Corps of engineers, uh, you know, for a little while. Um, but really just, there was always this line of never getting away from working from young people. And I never got away from doing ministry, I love um, that. but you know, so well, it, it was, it was really interesting. People that are confused about what they want to do, they need to always look at what they love and what they're good at, but also their tribe. Like you said, you always yeah. knew there was a tribe of young people and a focus. So that's a perfect segue. Just listening to your story is very interesting. You were always developing yourself interpersonally, right? Right. So mm -hmm. that's the main Absolutely. bulk of our show today. Absolutely. And um, Absolutely. it's really a precursor to marriage. Like people are, you know, I know marriage isn't like, in the 21st century so in vogue 
in the world, but as it, it's it's not. But as Christians, it is something to aspire to. Yes. It, it yes. Sounds, absolutely. Right. So let's talk about. I feel so selfish because you did all the research. You did the, <laughs> your blog. Your blogs are so rich. I need everyone to go to um, We Are Kingdom Strong when they get done with this and read yeah. some of these blogs because they are not just his opinion. He does the research, you guys, and yeah. the biblical backing. And it's really, really, really well done. So let's talk about the 10, the top 10 things that you're saying here for interpersonal development. Can I read okay. them off? I'll read them yeah, all okay. and then we'll go through we'll go through each one point by point. Being on time or punctual, mm -hmm. work ethic, effort, body language, energy, mm -hmm. attitude, passion being coachable, doing extra, and being prepared. So mm -hmm. let's start with being punctual. Um, you know, when I was doing the research for being punctual, um, it, it was very interesting that, um, it, you know, when, when we're talking about time, we're talking about how we relate to time mm -hmm. and how, how we have a relationship with time and that how that relationship is based off how we value time. So when we're talking about being punctual or being on time or um, having a calendar, managing your day, you have to be able to understand that you value your time. And if you value your time, you will value other people's time, mm -hmm. right? But even taking it a step further, um, particularly for those who, who are believers, if you look in the book of Genesis, it talks about how God created time to measure the days and nights and the seasons. And so we have to understand that time is given to us. And, and because God has given us time, it is something that we should value as a gift. That's good. Right? And so if we're valuing time in that way, that it is, it is a gift that God has given us, just like he's given us Christ, just like he's given us salvation, we would value our time differently, right? And, and, and so if we're having, if we value our time differently, then we're going to have a different relationship with time. When we, when we value those people in our lives, we have a special relationship with, with them. And, and, and so it's important that when we're talking about having a good relationship with time, then that, that means that we have to make good decisions about what we value. Right. And, 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 and if we're making good decisions about we value, then our decision making as human beings are based off of our core values. Right. So if we have a poor relationship with time, if, if we're constantly late, we're not managing our time well, then that means that somewhere in there, we're making bad decisions about time. And somewhere in there, our core, we don't have time as a core value to us. Yeah. Right. You know people who are, if you know people who are on time and manage their day well, then, then they understand not only is my time important to me, but then it will show others how your time, their time is important. Their time is important to you. That is not, it's not only a, ma a self-care. Right. Manage time, but it's also a way to show other people that you value them because if they're that you value them late, and value their time yeah that's a total dig when they're constantly late or or just they're just i feel it's very arrogant or disrespectful a absolutely it is and so for us to be able to show people that that we value our own time then that means that we're going to show up early or we're going to manage our time well because we value we value the gift that god has given us we value our time we we're making good decisions about our time because we believe that time is a being punctual is a core value. Mm -hmm. and, and in essence, our core values are, are influenced by God's wisdom. You know, I mean, if you go through all the Proverbs, it talks about, you know, how we interact with other people. Um, you know, everything, you know, here, here's what's really funny. You know, when we say, hey, uh, God is good all the time, and all the time, <laughs> God, God is good. So he, God, when God created time, he, he, he's good all of the time. And, and so if we're supposed to be, you know, imitators of God, then, then we need to value our time. And in essence, it would, you know, it, we'd have a good relationship, be a core, punctuality would be a core value. 
and we would be valuing other people's time. And, and even, even when we give our time, we, we're, we're showing people, hey, you know what? I, my, my time is precious to me. And so I'm, I'm giving you my time as a gift. I'm That's giving you so my time. You know, so, it, so it's, there's, a, there's a whole lot going on. You know, I love in, in, in the that. Why don't you ever spend time with me? Why don't you ever spend time with me? <laughs> exactly. Be, be, yeah. Because for some people, people, particularly if that's their love language, yes. that's a core value to them that yes. you spending time, you investing time because they understand the value or, 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 or even, um, uh, you know, the colloquial phrase quality time, right? Quality time is saying that I'm putting a higher value on my time yeah. than you would. And, and, and listen, there are a lot of people who, who don't take time seriously you know or they don't take the time to invest in doing things right and so on and so forth you know people are just like oh you know it's uh, well i don't have time i don't have time it's like but if you if, if, if you, you valued it you would if you value time you would just like oh oh i don't have money i don't have money i don't have money oh if you valued money mm -hmm. you managed your money mm -hmm. you manage your relationship with money yes you 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 make managing your time, you managing your relationship with money a core value. Yes, that's part two, but we're also uh, yeah, yeah. All right, spending. Sorry, sorry. A, we're uh, actually uh, spending uh, a lot of time on time. So let's yeah, go. Yeah, on. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's move on. Sorry, let's sorry, move sorry. on to my work. Bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was like we could do a whole episode on time. As yeah, I'm yeah, it, we we you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Do you see why y'all? Can you see why I asked part two yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before I even started with Errol, this is so great. All right, so number two, why is work ethic an important um, interpersonal development piece? So when you are establishing, okay, okay, so we're going back to core values, right? That, that you know, having a work ethic means that you are willing to do work, right? Mm -hmm. And so if it's, if it's a core value to you, work ethic is a core value to you, then that means that you're willing to do the work in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, so we're talking about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Are you willing, if you have a good work ethic, then you're willing to do the work in a relationship. Mm -hmm. If you're on the job, see, if you're on the job professionally and work ethic is a core value, then you're willing to do the work that it takes to get wherever you're going. I mean, that's one of the things that I, that's one of the things that I teach my kids all the time. I teach my yeah. kids three things about going out into the world, effort, practice and work. I love it. You have to be able to practice whatever you're doing. You've got to do the work when you practice. Mm -hmm. And when you put doing the work and you put in the practice, you've got to put in your effort in mm. all that you do. Oh, I like that and because so, the practice piece is key because I think a lot of people think you need that perfection when you do the work. And it's not about perfection. It's about the journey to get to that. To, that to journey to get to there. Because, you know, because honestly, a lot of, of what we do in practice is more important than what it does when you show up as an athlete on game day, mm. when you're, when, you know, when you're practicing, you know, they don't, they don't say um, you play faith, you practice mm. your faith. It's That's something true. that you, you have to constantly do over and over and over again. Yeah. And your practice time in your life it's not a destination. It's just a barometer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just measurement of where you are and, yeah. and practicing on how you get there. So if you're putting in the work in whatever you're doing, that, that work ethic that you have is going to show up in personal relationships, professional relationships, in, in, in everything that you do. It'll the, just the show verse, up. The verse that just came to me too, when you were talking is work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Is that a similar? Is that similar? Yes, because because you're practicing it. it it's yeah. you you have to be able to do the work because we're we're not. I, I think God when God created us, He understood that we're not going to be completed projects even at the end of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we have to. That's why you hear people say you have to look at the journey mm -hmm. instead of the destination. And that if we're practicing good work habits on the journey. It, 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 it will show up in your, in your faith. Again, it'll show up in your personal relationships. It'll show up on the job. It, it'll, yeah. it'll just happen. You mentioned effort, which is point number three, but I want to ask you this too, because I know a lot of people when they're relation with God, they maybe have a 
works mentality of, well, I'm not good yeah. enough, but if yeah. I do this, yeah. this and this, God will love me. Can right. we talk about like the separation between effort and then receiving his grace? Yes. So you, well, let's, let's go to grace first and then come back oh, to effort. We got so grace. Yes. Grace, grace is something that God has given us that we didn't have to do any work for. Yes. Right. Yes. So that's, exa- if he that's just, something that people don't really that's key. get. There's right. too much that's, that's religiosity key, and too right. much, right? right? And then you're like, okay. right. So if God has given us grace, it is a gift that he's given to us, then there's no work or effort that we have to do to get grace because it's given to us. I just picture sitting on a, a floaty in a pool. Yes. We're, <laughs> we're just... We're just there. Just receive, right? Just, you just you just receive grace. It's yeah. it's nothing because it's unearned favor. It's yes. it's unearned favor with God. There's nothing yes. that we can do to earn it. Mm-hmm. It's the earning part that people have a problem with. That they feel like they got to put in work yeah. and effort. Now Paul does say, you know, good works, but he's not talking about good works unto salvation. He's talking about doing the work in us. Mm. He's talking about uh, doing the work to establish God's kingdom in the earth. Mm -hmm. He's talking about doing work in our relationships to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul, if you you really read a lot of Paul's letters, he talks about the work that he did. You know, um, you know, being able to travel all over these different regions of the world. Uh, You know, he talks about how um, he's put in the work to teach the gospel. He put in the work to, um, you know, raise up leaders. That's the work that he's talking about. That if you see my good works that that I'm doing in what God is telling me to do, it it doesn't have anything to do with grace. I mean, it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with that. It is just something that we have to decide to receive when it comes to God's grace versus effort. Love that. How about we move into then body language? Number four, body language. It's, it's really funny about body language because body language is very intuitive, but it's still a skill that you have to learn Mm. because when we are, so, you know, so for example, I, I do a lot of talking with my hands. Right. Um, But that's, that's me uh, sending out signals also with the words that I say. So we have to learn how to, not only hear what people say, but interpret what they're saying so that we can be effective communicators, but also signals that people give out while they're communicating verbally, right? Um, And and so it's important for us to be able to interpret body signals along with how we verbally communicate. That's why body language is important. You can really tell what someone is feeling and thinking beyond their words. How many times, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Amy, have you heard somebody, you know, you've walked up to somebody, a friend of yours, and you're like, hey, how you doing? And they're like, I'm okay. Now, their words said, I'm I'm okay. Right. But you can read the room. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, no, there's something else is going on. And so, you know, we have to be able to learn how to interpret what people are saying and their body language, because we able, we need to be able to interpret the signals of the whole human being, particularly when we're trying to share the gospel, that we can, mm. you know, see how people are affected when you give, you know, when you give someone a good gift, you can tell it's, oh, this is thoughtful, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Or, oh my gosh, this was thoughtful, thank you. Like th- there's, you, you can tell in the interpretation of people's body language. And so learning body language is good professionally, personally, with your children, with your spouse, with coworkers, friends, learning how to interpret body language is, is, is a skill that we all need. Oh, it's funny, the follow-up question, well, before I say the follow-up, 7% of what we verbally, I heard this because I teach speech too, um, that's oh, only 7% you know. of what we say is the communication model and the majority is the body language. The body language that, that we in, in, interpret. So you know, you're just... The, you're helping me understand then because there's people that have natural emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm, Yeah. You're saying this is one piece to how to build your emotional intelligence. If you don't find yourself very astute with how to read a room, because there are people 
there are there are people pick you up can, on this you like right. you and I can. Right. So I just thought, wow, learn body language. And that would be just one step in that direction. How do, how do you else do develop emotional intelligence? Well, developing that? emotional, well, developing emotional intelligence is a whole, it's, it's being able to interpret your own, uh, and, and be interpret and, um, I, don't, I don't know a better word for it, but, but manipulate your own signals that you're giving off. Right, so you can and control you, your own signals. Right, you you have to be able to control be more aware. Signals. Yeah, be be more aware. Now, here's the interesting thing about it: our body language gives off more of how we feel than our actually words do, because we can, because of our intellectual intelligence, we can manipulate what we say mm -hmm. to get people to think something or, or feel something. But our true intentions come mm -hmm. through our body. The truly. signals it, it truly comes through, and so that's why with your emotional intelligence, you have to be able to, to manage all of this, what you think, what you say, how you how it's gonna be interpreted through your body language. You have to be able to you know, interpret all of that be, and, and particularly read people's body language mm -hmm. because people can say and tell you one thing, but we, we heard the saying all the time, but your actions will speak louder Truly. than your words or, or your actions will, will hold more significance to me than what you say at all. So true, so yeah. good. Mm. So that means um, we're gonna segue into number five. The energy is yeah. another issue of interpersonal mm. communication. Um, you know, with, with, with interpersonal development, energy is really important because um, energy is all around us. You know, the, you know, everything gives off energy. Plants, um, you know, people, animals, um, you know, and, and, and so we have to be able again to learn how to uh, manage our energy in terms of how we give it out. But we also have to manage how we receive people's energy. You know, we, we you know, there, you know, in the, in the early, what was it, uh, 2001, 2002, it was all about, oh man, you got bad energy. You know, right. I, I don't think people really knew what that meant, right. but you know, it was just, but that was just, you know, the avant-garde thing to say, you know, it's, oh man, I, man, I don't be around that energy, right. but, but you have to be able to be around anyone who has good or bad energy. You have to, you are the gatekeeper, you know, of the energy that you give out and get and, and receive. How do you then handle someone comes in a bad mood or they just have a lot of depression or whatever's on them? How do you not like, for me, I have this empathy that's on like high alert. It's hard to like, separate myself from what I'm discerning in that other person. And I just wonder, how do you manage that? You say you have to be your guard, a gatekeeper. You, you have to be a gatekeeper of the energy that you give out and receive because, but that also comes with practice that you have to be able to know who, if, you know, I'm a very high energy, you know, I'm big thinker, full velocity dreamer type guy. Yes. Uh-oh, you froze up. That's ironic. You're high energy. <laughs> you just froze. <laughs> uh, funny. Right. So I'm I'm this you know high energy guy, and and my wife has shared with me that reading people's body language, that I'm a little too much for them. Yeah. Sometimes. That 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 they're you know that 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 a lot of people have. Um, difficulty engaging me because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you know I'm I'm that guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and so they they have to learn how to be able to be in a room with someone who has high energy or you know be in someone in the room with low energy because there's a difference between high energy and low energy but sometimes people misinterpret high energy as positive energy Mm. And low energy as negative energy, mm. and and it's more you know higher high and low energy is more of a north and south thing, yeah. and then you know negative and positive energy is more like an east or west thing. Oh, that's a great. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people who have low energy but have good energy, right? Yes. That, that they're you know they're just they're yeah um you know there there are there are a lot of people you know who who are not high energy like me but they just give off a good vibe, right? right? Right. But it's not bad energy. That's and good. And if you don't know how to read that, yeah, you're like, oh well, she's oh, 
she's boring and she, but it's like, but she's got a good spirit about herself. Right, and, right. You know, but then there are people who are high energy and who are just annoying. Right. Just, you know, like, you know, don't, you know, just obnoxious yep. and, you know, uh, arrogant, overconfident, right. but that's high energy. It's like, oh, he's got a lot of energy, but uh, he's a jerk sometimes. It's like, that well, is funny. Okay. Do you know what I mean? You said this because my evaluator told me this year, we were getting evaluated on the remote learning right? yeah 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 yeah. and he said that it would be good if I had a little more excitement and energy in my voice I'm like whoa I think I am the positive but more low energy but more low five. energy but yet right. it's like because I always felt it was just so annoying if I'm like half asleep I'm a teenager and a teacher walks in like hi do you kids yeah. how are you doing yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. too much yeah. at 8 a.m right yeah. right so exactly. Kind of exactly like I always speak in like a normal voice when I teach Right Which means that they come down to that level, but I don't know. I thought, whoa, maybe I need to bring a little more. Genesis well, I mean, but class. you know, you know, but it's really interesting. You got to be able to read the room. If you're, yeah. if you're in, you know, if you're in a room where you're supposed to bring some energy, right? Then it'll be received because the expectation in the room is okay. Here we go. Right. Right. What? right. But if you're in, a, but if you're in a situation where you have to be calculated in your approach. You, have, you know, you, you've got to be able to uh, 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 monitor your voice tone, you know, you know, reduce some of your body language, you know, that, that's more manageable. And if you're in that environment, then that's how it's going to be received. So you've got to be able to, to manage that. And that's something, and that's something I have had to learn how to do because I yeah. was always on. Working with kids, working yeah. with young adults, I was always on. But then when I had to walk in, you know, with, people who were, you know, hashtag adulting, I had to really kind of you know, learn how to bring it down right, right. And, and be able to make presentations and, and learn how to communicate in, in, in a way that they, they could receive, that, that, they, that their guard wouldn't be up, that they would be open, yeah. that they would be receive me and my tone and my energy mm -hmm. be able, you know, but then when I got out of the room and they'd say, oh, great presentation, I'd be like, great, fantastic. So <laughs> glad that you guys enjoy. Like I could be able, right, you know, to right, turn right. the faucet, you know, back well, on, you know, full power. Well, it um, mentioned, and so we kind of like the, that. The, you it. remind me when you said faucet, cause I'm like, it's like drinking from a fire hose versus somebody who's sipping their drink, right? It's like <laughs> that kind of a deal. <laughs> Yes. But sometimes you don't want to drink from a fire yeah, hose. Yeah. You, get, you go to a great seminar or a sermon or whatever. You're like, whoa, I just got hit with so much learning. I need to go back to my hotel and just like decompress and figure and digest all this. Decompress. Right, right. But right. I also thought about multi-level marketing schemes that I've been involved in through the years. And they yeah. all have that rah, rah excitement. You know what it is. You don't trust it, right? No. And, and the, no, here's why you don't trust it. It has nothing to do with the energy. It has to do with the content. Yeah. You know that the stuff that they're trying to sell to you, if you will. Bamboozle. Yeah, it, it has to be, it, it's, it's gotta be, uh, you know, medicine with, with a, you know, with a sweet tangy flavor for the kids. Right. You know, it, it has, it has to be that. So, so that your guard is not yeah. up. If, if you're yeah. in a room that, you know, you know, they're, they're, they're playing black eyed peas in the background and, you know, come <laughs> on guys, let's, let's meet those numbers. <laughs> you know, not. we're giving out, not. you know, uh, cruises for the year, I yeah! Can't. You know, I like, can't. yeah, can't. no. And, and, the, and, and for some people that opens their gate, like, oh, I want to win a cruise too. Right. You know, th right. that, that, that's there. So they'll open up. Right. But people who know are like, yeah, I, I know. you know, and yeah, and, and, and then and they're they try to get people, you know, <laughs> or negative and what's wrong with you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then so they try to trump it with here comes a T-shirt launcher, <laughs> you know, and, and they're launching out T-shirts. No, no, now you're you know, describing oh, a T-shirt. Yeah. You're describing school assemblies, which is the bane of it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean but, but look at their audience. They've got to break through that wall of energy, you know, with with, it, with an obnoxious, right. high, you know, right. because you're taught, you know, teenage kids don't want to be at the rally at school, so you right. you got to go there. So let's. Um, and it's the same then. thing with multi level marketing. Yeah. So number six was go attitude. Ahead. How do you help someone develop a better attitude if you are mentoring them? 
Um, or so with attitude. Yeah. It, it's it. You you. We are our own masters of our attitude. Like the the only way that that we can um, uh, manage, if you will, self manage, is we have to manage our own attitude, right? It's a choice. And, and so it's it's a choice that we have to make, right? And so we have to be able that if we're going to influence someone who um, ha who who we feel uh, their attitude needs to be in a different place or a better place, then we have to give them options mm. to say, okay, I can change my attitude with this person, or I'm willing to make the change in my attitude for this particular situation. That that we have to be, we we can't we can't force. Right. attitude changes right, but we right. have to be able to put people in positions to make good decisions about changing their attitude so practical, you know what I mean? practicality you give all right you can either do this this or this you you got to give that you got to give love them options that. give them options you, you have to give people options we can do a to lot say, of lofty talking about change your attitude but if there's nothing yeah, practical attached there's not there's nothing to that because they know that those yeah. people are putting out there that, that attitude stuff. They know only people can change their own attitude. Right. But, but what they're trying to do is equip people. You know, they, they got to give them something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so that's why, you know, you you have to be able to be the kind of person to be able to read someone's attitude and be able to say, OK, listen, I'm, I'm particularly when you're when you're trying to address someone's attitude, you've got to be honest. You know, you've got to be able to to bring a level of honesty because you want to give them information to make a good decision or a different decision about their attitude. Like they yeah. have to be able to make that decision. I mean, look, look at kids. You have to be able, I'm, I'm learning with my son, Matthew. I have to give him, you know, a, 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 a I have to give him a good tone of voice. Yes. I've got to be able to have good energy. I've got to be able to give eye contact. Like I have to give him something for him to see, okay, I, I, I need to, I need to bring it down. Like, or I need to go to this place with my attitude. Mm -hmm. And it's about getting them to change their mind willingly, change their attitude willingly, mm -hmm. because you can't, you can't force anybody to change their attitude. It, it is, it is something, you know, uh, heck I've learned when I was married. <laughs> like, like when I got married and, and my and and I wanted to address the attitude that my wife has, whether it was good or bad, you know, north or north or south, east or west. Uh -huh. I need to be able to give her information to say, okay, here's where your attitude is, here's where my attitude is. What can you know, what what do you need from me That's so good. that we can get to a, a, a place and and let's work on it together. Let's be partners mm. together, but we're not on the merits thing yet, but let, let's that. go on. No, but I do love what you just said. What, and this could be non-marriage. What do you, right. need, what do you need from me should be in everybody's repertoire. Th that, that should let's be your first. That, right. Let's take that as a takeaway for sure. Um, but yes. you, do you find then that to help someone change their attitude that you do have to get them to ignite their passion or how do you, how do you, do, is there a correlation with that? No, you know, passion is just something people have. Yeah. And 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 passion has to be discovered and then you 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 throw fuel on the fire, right? Mm. So when you you when you're trying to um when when you're trying to address someone's passion, it's something that they have to know and then you have to be able to work with them to say, "Okay, if you're passionate about this, how can I help you how can I help you turn up the intensity?" On mm. your passion. That's good. Because we we're all passionate about something. Yep. You know wh whether you know it's 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 family or friends or or uh, you know um, money or or our hobbies. We're all passionate about something, and we have to be able to you know help people discover that, and then be able to give them a plan towards bringing a higher level of intensity towards their passion, meaning. Intensity meaning I'm going to put you in a position where you're working in a place where your passion is fueled constantly. That turns up their passion all the time. I love that so much, especially working with yeah. teenagers. I read this great book called The, uh, Dream, yeah. the Dream Manager. And I really believe that we need to replace the dean's office, the discipline office, 
with a dream management office and hold kids accountable to their dreams and say, what are you doing to get closer to your dreams? And I'm right. holding you to this. And that's the discipline I'm ha having or, or regular, you know, cause there's so much apathy in the system. It makes sense when we're not tapping in anyone's passion and it's right. all this generic blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's beautiful. I love that. Um, so now when you say being coachable, of course, we all love that one being cut. Uh -huh. coaches ourselves. Um, obviously I know you are coachable because mm -hmm. you know, you can't be a good coach unless you're coachable. Right. 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 But that is right. one thing that is key in interpersonal development. Interpersonal. Yeah. It's, you have to be willing to have another set of eyes and ears on your life. I like that. That, that's that's basically what it is and, and be and, open to feedback for sure and like not take it as feedback. a criticism or get defensive right it's like thank right. you for the feedback like every survey you take i i one time reamed i think it was like gave a facebook survey and i'm like i hate you i hate you you bother me get good blah, 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 blah. and at the end it said thank you for your feedback i'm like oh what a perfect way to respond to everyone's criticism <laughs> right because right? i just <laughs> reamed them and then of course the automatic um, right reaction but but it's important that when we're talking about being coachable, there are several different factors that fall into that. But being coachable means not only you have another set of eyes and ears on you, but you got to have a good relationship with that other set of eyes and ears. Mm. And, and so being able to be in a situation where you're, you're able to receive constructive criticism, where you're able to receive um, some level of direction or redirection you have to be able to check the source of that criticism you know if if you know there there are amy there are people that that your supervisors may say hey listen you need to bring more energy but then if a coworker come to you who 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 or, or a fellow teacher that you have a pretty good relationship with they came to you and said and said you know what amy i really i really have always wanted to say this but i never knew how to say it and then they just share something with you because there's another set of eyes and ears on you. Yeah. You're going to receive that differently. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a scripture in, in Proverbs that says, um, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Meaning mm -hmm. I'm willing to be wounded by my friend because mm -hmm. it's my friend that's mm -hmm. telling me the truth and my feelings are getting hurt. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to think twice about, this person who, who is a yes person and keeps telling me all the good things about me and, and I'm not growing in any way because they're not willing to tell me the truth, even though it might hurt my feelings. Mm. And, and so we have to be being coachable. We have to be able to check the source of the coaching and, and be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to make these, you know, adjustments in my life, um, you know, help me through these difficult or challenging times or, or help me get past challenges and barriers in my life where I want to grow and develop. Yeah. Um, but being coachable is really, is, is really critical. Um, in when you're trying to particularly go up the ladder, like you gotta be, you gotta be able to, and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying take harsh criticism, mm -hmm. but constructive, mm -hmm. having a relationship with some, that someone, whether it be a mentor, um, you know, or, or, or a supervisor, but being able to know each other well enough to say, Hey, I'm going to say these things to you and, and know that I know where we're trying to go. I know what we're trying to do. Yes. And, and if you don't, if, if, if you need to make this adjustment so that we can get there and, and that's what be, and it's a, pra again, it's a practice. You have to yeah. practice being coachable. And that's another marriage thing. We'll go into part two, but that's such a great, yeah. great, like we're <laughs> yes. on this together, right? We're on this yes. Together. It's, we better it's like partnership. how to, row the boat a little bit. Okay. Right. Right. Um, doing extra. Ooh. Number nine. I love doing extra because it, it speaks to the idea that not only are we um, willing to um, meet expectations, but we're willing to exceed the expectations that we're willing to under promise and over deliver. I'm a really big doing extra guy nice. um because it because at some point when you practice doing extra you're doing extra goes from doing extra to living a lifestyle of generosity yeah does that make sense and, and so, generosity is automatically comes it, back to you it, it, not that you do it for that reason not you do it for that reason it comes right. back to you like but, a it, fire but it just comes back to you right 
it, and, and so you want to be able to do extra in, in your own life, um, doing, being able to do the extra work in personal relationships, um, you know, going the extra mile, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and, and at work, mm -hmm. um, but that it just become habitual. Yes. Because at some point, once it becomes a habit, then you'll be able to look at situations and say, you know what, I, it's a perfect, perfect example, when you're, you're doing a, uh, uh, a gift for someone's birthday, you know, we could all write a card, throw a $5, $10 Starbucks card in it and call mm -hmm. it a day. Right. Hey, that's, that's doing extra. I don't have to do it, but I'm gonna do it. But when you put thought into who oh. that person is and what they're about, what would be really helpful? That is doing, ex that's doing extra. And then the gift that you give them would be received as generosity. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I knew. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes. And it's the, it's, you know, it's the best thing that they had. Wow. Mm. You, know, you know, because ultimately mm -hmm. doing that shows mm -hmm. people that you love them yes. and that you care about them yes. and that they're special. And, and so we want to be able to do extra, even on the job, but we're doing extra and being generous on the job. We have to, let me, let me make a caveat, make sure people don't take advantage of you. Right. Right. Because you, they know you'll do extra, but even on the job, when you're being generous with your time and, oh. and being coachable and mm -hmm. putting in the effort mm -hmm. and managing your body language at work, you're doing mm -hmm. all these extra things on the job showing that you're generous and doing extra now becomes, you know, uh, you know, Hey, um, you know, I, I want this person to do this because I know they'll do extra, but yeah. I also knew that they'll do a good job. They'll put in the time, they'll put in the work. Yes. So it's just something that we can all do, but it's a decision that we have to make to do extra. It's a decision to practice doing extra so that it'll become a lifestyle of us being generous to others. Love that. Okay, final point. Be prepared. <sighs> Preparation. <laughs> preparation. Preparation. <laughs> um, preparation to me is is really the beginning of of, of all things. It, it's preparation is start starts before whatever you're doing starts, right? Um, you know, when when people get engaged. By the time they they start their engagement to the time that they're married, all of that is preparation. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. And, and, and a lot of people don't understand that when you're engaged, that doesn't mean that you have to get married, but that you're preparing yourself to be with this person. It, if, if, if you discover things about people, particularly in being prepared, and you're in that engagement, it's like, yeah, you know what, maybe this is not going to work because the way... The, the way I'm preparing for this life with this person, it looks like we're not going to be prepared for marriage. Right. <laughs> um, right. And it's the same thing with the job. You know, when you when you uh, submit your resume and they call you for an interview, by the time you get that interview and the time you get that actual interview, you should be preparing for that interview, doing research on, uh, you know, the company that you're working with. You know, finding out who's going to be interviewing you. Mm -hmm. You know, what time of day is it going to be? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all of these things about being prepared. And when you are prepared for things, you're ready. Yeah. You're ready to do all those things. And, and, and even if you don't feel ready, you're prepared for whatever is about to happen. Love That's that. why preparation is really, really important you know, well, that we be able to do that. I always say to my students, um, try to get and just go to a business that you want to be. Say it was a culinary, right? right. And just work for free. Offer to work for free. That and you're going to get the best education. Now, would Absolutely. you say, would it be annoying if somebody who's not married would just like glom onto you and your wife and say, would you mentor us? Would you be our, our, our guide? Is that something that people have done with you or is it something that's like, no, I, I wouldn't say that they did that, but you know, we, we have a, a circle of friends who feel that they trust us with um, the, the, the concerns of their relationship or the concerns of their marriage and, and, and us with them too. Mm, um, you know, great. that, that's, that's also part of preparation. I, and, and I'll give you a, a, a quick story. 
when you're in the marriage ceremony, what's really interesting is that there's a conversation that the officiant has with the people that are there. They say to them, hey, if you're here as a witness, do you promise to make sure that you're gonna help them stay together yeah. and be this village and, 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 and be a place for them to be? That's, that's preparing your friends and family I love that. For you being married together. And a lot of and, and the whole and the whole room says, I will. Yes. And then it'll be the same people. Oh, I, I can't stand him. <laughs> I knew he was trash from the beginning. Or yo, bro, I, I knew that she was she was spitting venom on your name even before men I knew it. It's like, oh. wait a minute. If you knew all that when I was preparing to get married to her, why didn't you say all of that then? And 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 so you know, it, 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 you know, the officiant says that because the officiant is trying to prepare family and friends for for this marriage to be in that environment. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it's it's preparation. It's 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 trying to get this marriage into an organic, specific situation where everyone agrees that we we witness these two people coming together, and and we're going to partner with them to make sure that they stay together through sickness and in health, yeah. you're richer or poor. You know, so preparation in, in, in a lot of areas of our life, uh, you, you work with high school students preparing to go to college. Yep. That starts now in mm -hmm. junior high, mm -hmm. just all the way through. So, you know, preparation, you know, happens a lot in our lives. I, I, think, we, I think we just don't acknowledge it as preparation. I love that. And that kind of ties right back in, circling back to our title, Ain't Gonna Be No, I'm not, not Ready. Ready. That's right. All right. All so, of this is about all of that. <laughs> do you have any final thoughts before we go into part two about uh, this episode? Uh, no, please go to my blog, wearekingdomstrong.wordpress.com. You can follow me on Instagram um, at wearekingdomstrong. Follow me on Twitter at bekingdomstrong. Um, and if you know you're looking for uh, some coaching, uh, you can email me at wearekingdomstrong at gmail.com. You guys, it's so good this blog, and you're going to be inspired. And you need a coach, he's your guy. So let's say goodbye until we meet again. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.